Wow. You, you need to catch your breath. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. And I'm, by the way, I'm looking at you and I'm not looking at you. So excuse the weirdness today. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just here for the ride. <laughs> Wow, today's been a real gnarly. What did I call it? A clusterfuck recently. Um, you said that you owed me a cluster, or I, you owed me my own clusterfuck, which is honestly the nicest thing you've ever said to me. I do officially owe you a clusterfuck because I we it's now ten ten, and uh, we were supposed to start recording seventy minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this isn't anything new for us. Like, it's not like oh no, we're delayed. I know, but what I, is this feeling? Basically, I'm in Fredericksburg currently, and whenever I record here, I use a microphone, and I thought I lost the cord to that microphone, but I had a backup microphone, but that required setting up, like, from scratch, a completely new sound mixer. And then Christine and I had to, like, through FaceTime, adjust all my levels. As if I know how to, and then I was like, <laughs> I mean, we can pretend like I know how to use a mixer, because this thing is fancy and all digital, and so we're just poking around the buttons, and somehow... Somehow the audio is actually working, but then it took an hour for us to like figure all that out. I was scrambling and like ripping boxes apart, trying to find all the right equipment and set up new microphones. And uh, at the end of the day, we sat down and I was about to start my audio and I found the cord to the original microphone. Just picked up a cord and went, oh my God. And it was right there. The chaos, the anger, the anger, truly. I I was fuming. (laughs) The rage inside of me. (laughs) It was just like, I, so we could have recorded an hour ago had I just like, listen, fiddled through a chord. Maybe the universe wanted me to get some more caffeine in my system before we started. Who knows? Who knows? But we're here now. Well, this energy actually is really well paired with the story that I'm going to tell later, but. And you'll understand why in a second. But oh. before we get into that, um, why do you drink? Because I had reasons to drink this week, but that currently this one just stole the show. Okay, well, I feel kind of bad because my reason um, that I drink is not very nice to you, and I feel a little bit like um, now I need and now I owe you some kindness, and let's I'm not call giving it, it. Let's call it even. I don't even know the situation yet. Oh, okay, maybe this even. can be my okay. I like this. See, the universe knew that oh. I felt too guilty to <laughs> to bring this up. And so now cosmically, I, feel... I had to just completely panic for the last hour because you felt guilty okay you had to inconvenience me so that i could inconvenience you it's perfect yeah um so i don't want this to sound alarming but i feel a little bit like you've been gaslighting me and i'm finally realizing like oh okay maybe maybe i need to call em out i don't know um okay there's this is a multi-layered process here okay wow okay cool i (laughs) sure okay you look re- you look ready to rumble okay I, all i all i know is i'm my adrenaline's a little too high for no. whatever's about to happen i'm sorry i don't want to send you into a heart situation no no, no um, you're not you're not but uh, you are leading with you've been gaslighting me for a long time and this is multi-layered <laughs> Okay, but it's also me. So like, <laughs> I it could be anything. I could have gaslit you in that conversation about Girl Scout cookies a month ago. But now it's who knows? You probably did that too. But uh, we'll get to that next week. Uh, what did once I, I what did take... I how did I psychologically manipulate you? But which in a way where I, by the way, also don't think I knew I was doing that. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's where the layers come in. Um. So I okay. I texted you the other day, and I was like hey i'm in love with robin on stranger things okay now this is where the story branches into multiple pieces so very quickly okay (laughs) so you were like oh wow okay so we talked about it and then i posted this tiktok slash reel i guess about how i was and it uses like this jimmy buffett law and order sound oh yes i know the trend did you see my post no i haven't actually been on social media lately Oh, okay. So, um, I've been posting, like, I've been like reposting stuff, but I haven't seen, I haven't been scrolling, you know? Okay. So it's a really fun little trend where it plays like, uh, Jimmy Buffett and then it goes into law and order. So it's sort of like everything's happy and you're telling kind of either a, a, a lot of people use it for like, um, for their pronouns and things like that, where it's like you're telling somebody something and you're not sure how they're going to react. Mm-hmm. And so it goes into the law and order while you wait for their reaction. <laughs> um, 
And so I did that because I had told, like, kind of jokingly, because I had told Blaze, like, oh, I have a crush on Steve on Stranger Things, but I also have a crush on Nancy and Robin. And then it was kind of like a wait to see how he responded. And he was like, that's awesome. And then it goes back into Jimmy Buffett. Okay. Yeah. So I posted that and um, I got a bunch of DMs. Okay. First from, of all. From Robin? From Robin. <laughs> and we're getting married. Bye. <laughs> no, um, I got a bunch of DMs. And uh, from listeners who were like, wait a second. Well, first of all, everyone commented, why do you like, Na like, okay, Nancy's fine, but Robin's where it's at. Because I posted about Nancy and Steve. And I was like, yeah, I know. I love Robin. But M made me feel like that was <laughs> the craziest thing I've ever said. I was like, I love Robin. You were like, what is wrong with you? No, absolutely not. I'm and I remember, I was like, man, I must be like off base, like massive off base and then i posted that and literally everyone in the comments was like no we love robin and i was like shit i should have just gone and like said my truth and instead i picked nancy i thought it would be more relatable especially in a time where you're already speaking so many truths like mm -hmm. <laughs> you were like but this is my caveat i almost huh. uh, th right i like i like tweaked it and then i was like damn it why did i tweak it i don't know i thought it'd be more relatable because m made me feel like i was totally nuts Okay. I, I did not mean to. I just, maybe we just have, I mean, first of all, a, a hang on. No. <laughs> you could not be gaslighting me more all of a sudden. We have absolutely different types, and you've known that from the beginning. You literally love every gay man there ever was, and you want it's him true. to fall in love with you and be your husband. It's true. And you're going to look at me and say that my tastes and your tastes should be similar? I The second I said I wasn't into Robin, you should have been like, well, then that's why Robin's that's exactly ding, ding, my jam. You, we can't even agree on okay. pizza. Are you fucking kidding me? You knew what you were. Okay. Okay. No. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Fine. Wow. Fine. Someone really just said, I want to have adrenaline today too and just <laughs> just decided okay. to have an opinion okay <laughs> okay but okay i i guess i'm just not okay it's like the time i said i love antony and you were like what is the matter with you i don't and, know i and think I, but i'm the, i'm the odd man out on that everyone says i'm the crazy one for that okay fair all right fine second level of this oh god i thought we yeah, were so, done. no what? of course not um what? so then i got a bunch of dms being like wait a second are you like I thought we all knew this already that you also liked girls too and I was like yeah I did too but then I was confused and I got a couple DMs that confirmed my confusion because they were confused too because they said yeah you know I always thought um I always thought that uh we knew that you also like girls but then recently on an episode Em was talking about their gay bathroom and said you were not invited unless there was uh, a queer person in there already um and then they said so i thought i made it up and so a bunch of people dm'd and said like wow and one person said <laughs> i felt like i feel like gas m is gaslighting me because i really thought we all knew this and then m was like you're not welcome in my gay bathroom well obviously and, i'm biphobic so. i know and then so i was like okay i'm glad i'm not the only one because when you said that i was like well clearly i need to reinforce my side of the story because m doesn't even have an understanding here and so anyway i felt like i needed to restate it but then everyone was like i thought we already knew this and i was like me too but i wasn't invited into the gay bathroom so now i needed to reinstate my truth and i wish i i you know I just, I, Robin is where it's at. Well, okay. The Robin one, I cannot get behind. You are officially invited to the queer bathroom, but you had never publicly outed. It. You've never said anything. I didn't know. I didn't know. Nobody asked, you know, that's the thing. That's fair. I mean, I assumed, but I wasn't going to be like, oh, and your bi ass can come to the bathroom. But we, if you okay, hadn't but I said did anything. say how in love I was with Natalie Morales, with Natalie Dormer, with, I guess, everyone named Natalie. I don't know. I guess um, so, but I'm also in love with Chris Evans, but I'm not actually in love with Chris. I don't know. I wasn't going to speak for you. I was going to wait for you to come to me. And then now that okay. you are officially part of the queer little club, you can be in the bathroom. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. But I mean, you know, I, I get it to a point too. I definitely get it. Cause it's sort of like, I also didn't want to be that guy. Like, you know, I'm, I'm married to a dude. Like I'm, I got to stop it with that. No, but I got it on easy street. So I'm like, it's not my place to be like, Hey, me too. You know? Um, but anyway, so I just uh, thought it was very funny and I screenshot the one person who DM me that M was gaslighting them because I laughed so hard. And then I was like, wow, I'm going to say that 
our, it was one listener, but I'm going to say that our listeners and I have all been gaslit. <laughs> sure, we could we could call it gaslit, or we could call it I've been outed before I was ready, so I wasn't going to do know, that to you. So. I know. I mean, and I uh, listen. I knew fully that this would all turn back directly onto onto me, and that well, I would that, be that Robin argument is a little wishy washy for sure, considering I, we've yeah. never had similar tastes. I know. I guess. Uh, I guess I just trust my friends too much because, like, when you're like, no, that's wrong, I'm like, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Girl, you need to get it together when it comes to your I, who I've, you have a crush on. Well, imagine uh, if I was like, Blaze is not it. <laughs> I would, would you probably do? have a, I don't know. Mm. But you if don't someone... say that, so I'm still married to him. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> Well, then, hey, all right, I'll take that. Okay, I'm sorry. That was just such a rant. But um, last night, people, when that person DM'd me saying they felt like M was gaslighting them, I laughed so hard. Um, I feel like you're going to have it framed, and then you're just going to use am. it every time we disagree on something. <laughs> no, but, like, this has already turned back to me, and we all know it. Like, now I'm the asshole. We'll so. call it even, especially given this whole light fia- or microphone fiasco earlier. Let's just, <laughs> you know what? You're right. I gaslit you. And it, I felt so bad. Whatever you need to say, I guess. Sure. The whole time yes. when you were, like, frantically trying to find chords, and you were, like, apologizing over and over, and I was like sipping my coffee like i'm just getting ready to to really just put you Ream on blast me. yeah for no good reason whatsoever uh, um anyway that's why i drink so um i guess i like girls too okay your turn well you know what Ugh, i can't beat that so welcome to the best side i guess dark welcome. side i don't know in the best way uh thank you you're welcome uh, i'm sure everyone is very excited to hear your rolling in list of people that you have a crush on it's so long i mean it, and at this point it's everybody i don't even it's i had to tell blaze i was like i just need you to understand that like i think i just am like mildly in love with every person that's i don't know how else to put it so that's a cool way to to live life though it's hard it's okay. a lot of um it's it's probably why i was emo in high school very just so frustrated by just every like person so sad <laughs> so, so overwhelmed and so frustrated so sad and sexually frustrated <laughs> help oh god in well, catholic school lol well, well. well i'm proud of you thank you for officially telling me and you can now come to the queer bathroom thank you that's all what if i made all that up just so i could get in the bathroom that does feel a little christine feel like me it does feel like something i would do. i'll allow it um okay speaking of queer bathrooms you have officially seen the troll hole oh thoughts okay. Now this is where we get back onto M's the superhero of this podcast. Oh, oh wow. Like, we really just love to whiplash left and right. You know I like to keep you guessing. On um, the toes, yeah. We I visited for one night exactly, and of course priority number one was uh enter the troll hole. And wow, it did not disappoint. M you kicked ass. And we uh, you filmed a video which was so smart. Um, and so we're going to put, I think we're going to put that on Patreon, right? Yes. Okay, yes, cool. Yes, we can. I, um, um, I, and you can, I, the, I, the irony is I was supposed to show Christine and then the next episode we recorded, uh, you would, everyone else would finally be able to see it, but, uh, I had to come home last month. Oh, so, right. Oh, so right. Now, so you are welcome to describe it to people if you'd like. Oh, it's if, beautiful. Oh, it's, it's. It's amazing. Um, first off, Em and I have the same couch now, which was a super didn't see didn't that even coming. Know. Didn't even know. Didn't even um, know. But that was a fun little little thing. Uh, but so okay, wow. I'm just trying to. I'm so overwhelmed. There's so many. So the, obviously the celery vase is there. Oh, someone mailed me a celery vase. Oh, fun. So now we have but, matching ones. But too. I you assume go- you got one too. Um, mm, I haven't. I yeah. It's I probably haven't. in the mailbox. But somebody. But I don't know who it was because it came from eBay. So it just had anyway. Okay. Oh. Um, but so M has like all these, oh my God, M, I don't even know where to begin. You have like sliding doors that have different backgrounds, which like you had introduced on Instagram live at one point, but most people probably hadn't seen that where you can like, like M wallpapered sort of the front of these doors. So you can slide the sliding door and have a different background behind you. It's so cool. Like the curtains have like a green screen that you can use if you pull it's it green the right screen, way. Soundproof soundproof (laughs) curtains i mean what and then there's like uh a yak there's a yak he's good he he feels right he's a little hassock situation he's actually called a critter sitter and it's wait i have one of those wait what's your animal it was a panda 
Oh, well, yeah, he's a, like he's literally meant to be like a little stool for children. But I bought him as a footstool. I love myself. him. Yeah. I had like one of those critter sitters, but it was bigger and his name was Bandit and he was a panda. Anyway. Um, and then uh, you, you have these. Oh, my God. It was amazing. I'm like so overwhelmed trying to even describe it. Well, thank you. I try my well, I did try to make everything. I tried to make every inch of it as functional as possible because I was like, I like now that I've got all the soundproof curtains that are different colors and I've got the sliding doors and I've got my main backdrop. I've got like five backgrounds for the next time I need anything. I've got I tried to keep it minimal with the lights and the tripods yeah, it, and all that. And, I mean, Em was like, here, watch this and was like set the lights to underwater and all of a sudden the lights are just like like undulating like water and i'm like what the fuck is going on yeah and then it's it's like one of those i mean not to use this uh comparison again but it's like one of those it's like the bat cave (laughs) like you go in and you're like wow things come out of the wall and they're just suddenly things do come out of the walls actually literally (laughs) it's the most amazing thing like even a cover on the light switch so that you don't accidentally turn the power off. There's a plastic mm-hmm. cover and like, oh, the side table, um, it goes, it folds up and down, but it's camouflaged into the wall with the same wallpaper. It was like, thank you. So just every little inch of it was like, what the hell? Um, and then all your like amazing little tchotchke setup with like your Funko Pop and um, I forget. Oh my God. There were so many cool things. I'm like, I, I'm overwhelmed. Um, even my, try to remember. My only disappointing thing is the Captain America shield that I I finally have a place to hang it. It's just been like leaning in the corner of the room for six months. Um, but I finally have it on the wall. But it is apparently perfectly the same size as my head when my head is in front of the camera. <laughs> and so, for all you know, currently, uh, current viewers, if you are looking at my face. You would not know there's a Captain America shield behind me until I move my head. So the only thing I messed up on that whole place was like I was supposed to have a cool backdrop and the shield was supposed to be like the star of the show. And it, now I you mean, can't even tell it's there. To be fair, you do move a lot. Mostly I do to, move a lot. Mostly to cough. So well, every time <laughs> we might just have to leave those bits in now so that uh, <laughs> I'll just start having more of an allergy attack. So I, <laughs> and then everyone can enjoy it. Oh, but I was so glad. Also, this is actually a perfect segue for me to remind everybody. I am not, nor do I plan to be engaged to Allison anytime soon. And I know that's a sharp left turn, but every single person, it seems, uh, was confused when I posted that you had accepted my offer to come to the troll hole because I posted a picture of our Evite on Instagram. And I had like... I put like the little emoji, the little like one of those. Oh, she said yes. She said yes. But it says like, you are invited to the inaugural troll hole ribbon cutting ceremony. <laughs> and like, and because, so I, I thought everyone got it. And it but tagged me. <laughs> I tagged you. And like, I'm pretty sure mm, 200 people said, oh my God, congrats on the engagement. Al- you oh, and Allison shit. are so happy. And, well, and I was like, everyone... Can you imagine if that was the way I announced an engagement? That like you accepted an invitation to the troll hole ribbon cutting ceremony because Allison's yeah the it, the I and like I was getting inundated with people not inundated but Alexander and Blaze both messaged me like why does everyone think Em is getting engaged and I was like I, I have have no idea no idea I feel like I've made it pretty clear on here that like marriage is not the end goal uh, to me not in the car not necessarily in the tarot it could be in the cards one day but like not even currently some like that's not like (laughs) everyone relax (laughs) you're not helping the situation i guess everyone all you're doing is uh giving my mom a heart attack every five seconds when she thinks i've (laughs) i've not told her i'm engaged oh my god and you've told everyone else yeah Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know what that was about. Uh, but anyway, to, to clear it up for several people, um, that post about the troll hole was like uh, for Christine. That was about me. Okay. Yeah. Allison who? 
Uh, ha ha. Yeah, By the ha. way, Allison and I are engaged, so I don't know what everyone's problem is. I already proposed to Allison, or vice versa. I can't remember too many yeah. margaritas, but Allison's we, been proposed to. Where everything's good, it's We're fine. fine. And she, I said, think, you know yes. what? You know what? Though speaking of gaslighting and psychological manipulation, I think you did that to people because now everyone knows about your fake wedding, and now everyone's going to be like, oh, Sam and Allison could have a fake wedding. Fake and- wedding. Mm-hmm. Well, I only talked about the fake wedding on the Patreon bonus. But um, I guess while we're here, yeah. Or did I already talk about it on the show? I feel like you talked about it here. I could I probably be wrong. did. It doesn't matter. I think. Well, who knows? But let's just say there was once a fake wedding, and there now was. I think other people are getting their their stories crossed. So. Uh, and then Amanda from Wine and Crime got engaged, so that really s- spun everyone out. You know, e- everyone's having a field day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, except you. Except <laughs> You're just me. having That's a heart okay. attack. <laughs> I have, I'm having a field day by not having anxiety over a wedding, so I'm good. <laughs> That's true. Um. Anyway, that's a lot of stuff that we gave people. Are are you happy now, listeners? Are you feeling? Is does this feel like a fun episode so far? Because I yeah. think it's only going to get more chaotic. I feel like we're just yelling at you, and I do apologize. Um, I feel like we're yelling at everyone. I feel like anyone who like walks through the door is going to get screamed at. It's oh, like, they're in the danger zone. It's like for you're sure. You're gaslighting me. Well, my microphone doesn't work, but also I'm not engaged. But also, uh, oh, what's you know? that in your hand? Is that the freaking cord you said you lost? What the hell? <laughs> I'm literally actually playing with it because I'm so angry. (laughs) (laughs) You're going to like destroy it by the end of this call. Um, Okay. Well, here is the situation with this story I have to tell you today. Do tell. (sighs) Okay. Well, the vibe of today actually really is on, on par because this story is also kind of, you know how when I did my like, I was trying to do the of the back door theory and I accidentally covered yes. the backwoods. Okay, so this isn't totally that, but you know how like the back wh- whichever one I covered and I wasn't supposed to, how it actually has nothing to do with the supernatural. This Absolutely. This is also that and I <laughs> I apologize and also if if this isn't your vibe or if you I'm not trying this isn't like us testing the waters to like try new material. Like this is just kind of a one off and if you do happen to like this and you want us to do more of these go for it but this is just more of a what the fuck story it's not paranormal and it's not aliens and it's not cryptids i like a what the fuck i mean okay but don't, well, don't worry everybody stay in well you don't know if you like it or not it's um, no it's not, definitely people are definitely gonna like the story it's just not my usual stuff but it's it's also and I because have a, i have a murder waiting for you afterwards so don't worry don't go anywhere <laughs> some things never change some things never change unfortunately I had to do something last minute and thus we have our what the fuck story that I can't wait. It was kind of a moment of I I don't it doesn't even have to be supernatural. I'm so sleepy. So um, I can't I I for one cannot wait. Okay, cool. So this is and I think I'm pronouncing it correctly because it's French. Um, This is the story of Terrer. No clue. Cool. So Terrer is somehow historical but also i think has somehow morphed into a lore so that's what that's how we're spinning it on how it fits on this show because i really do think over time like it must have just through the the game of history telephone yeah it this can't be real as as far as i'm concerned it can't be real but maybe it is um but it's because it started with some real facts and i think it's just evolved over time but to rare was known as the man who ate anything <gasps> and like couldn't stop eating anything so <laughs> i'm just which like you at three in the morning like all right this is the this is the path i'm taking here <laughs> for a second i thought you meant oh i could just imagine you at three in the morning because i would also be the man who eats anything i wasn't gonna say it but yeah also that <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of parallels here folks okay so uh this is in the 1770s in the south of france it's 1772 when Terrer was born. And that's pretty much all we know about his early life. Um, we don't know his real name either. I think Terrer was like a stage name. How do you spell it? T-A-R-R-A-R-E. I think in <sighs> with like the accent, it'd be like Terrer or, or something. Beautiful. Probably not. <laughs> Charming. <laughs> I can't do the throat thing. But I think you that's You can do pretty well. As far as I'm concerned. Oh God! That Ew. was a bad one. That was a bad one. I inserted the microphone. An, uh, literally, like 
<laughs> like buzz like it like shorted <laughs> out for a moment they were gonna say it like ran away from me it also i tried to do like a tongue roll situation it did not work it did not work <laughs> okay terrer is how we're gonna do it let's do it that way um so he was born in 1772 we don't even know if that's his real name we think it was a stage name because he ends up being like a street performer through his oh. weird skill um and he was shockingly small to for being oh. known as the man who eats everything but i feel like that's always the case i feel like i've met so many people who are like i just have a fast metabolism and i'm like fuck you like yeah seriously <laughs> like, this is like a joey chestnut situation yes okay, okay. so uh actually i i had a friend growing up and she was always the person who like she just like you she would eat like an entire pizza and then like have another ab by the end of it and I'm, <laughs> and i would just be like i hope that doesn't sound body shaby i was just like damn like how do you do it like let's can we switch lives for a day because i'm not having that experience and we might learn from each other <laughs> um but so uh he was also maybe that was the situation i don't really know but people often comment on the fact that he was like base may, maybe a hundred pounds right. by the time he was like 17 which like on its own, I don't think sounds very particularly healthy. Maybe a hundred pounds is I don't remember what seventeen. I feel like a hundred pounds isn't is is pretty standard for is a it? teen teenage boy. Like okay. A skinny skinny boy. Well, it sounds like he never really goes beyond a hundred pounds. Wow. Um, but by seventeen, he was a hundred pounds and he was eating so much beef per day, it equated <gasps> to twenty five percent of a whole cow. No. Mm -hmm. what so he's eating 25 percent of a cow basically every day a day and he's 100 <gasps> pounds and that's just like one example of how much food he was eating Ugh. and never satiated um oh and that's too bad the story goes that his parents eventually kicked him out because they couldn't afford the <gasps> food bill for him um Oh I don't God. know if that's the case. They could have kicked him out for probably any other reason, and it would still seem like shitty parenting. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he just turned 18, and they were like, go fly. Um, but anyway, he ends up on his own and without any contact from his parents, and he ends up becoming a vagabond, which- Oh, sure, sure, sure. Our favorite. Our favorite. We love Walter the Vagabond. Love a good vagabond. So Terrer, he is now wandering the streets. Uh, ironically, well, I don't know if it's ironically, more like sadly, he's begging for food. And <gasps> based on his hunger level compared to others, he's probably, I don't know if more desperate is the right phrase, but he's certainly very desperate um, to, sure. to eat something. And he, I mean, he's literally used to eating like a quarter of a cow. Yeah, a, a loaf of bread ain't going to cut it. Exactly. Um, so he's begging for food, and eventually he gets a job as an opening act for a snake oil salesman. Oh, so fun. Fun. One of those Pirelli's Miracle Elixir people. I also love that they have an opening act. Like, it's right. like, oh, no, I'm a doctor for sure, for sure, for sure. And I'm selling this to heal all your cancers for sure, for sure. But here's my opener. <laughs> for uh, sure, for take sure. Take the mic. For sure. Take the mic. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> and so basically his opening act yeah i'm just trying to think of like a true medical practitioner or like yeah yeah who's like and now here is my fire breather like truly what? like warm up the crowd for me you know i do wonder if maybe he could spin it like oh no like i just want people to be like really drawn into my my pitch for my i don't well, know yeah I know, but I wonder if if he believed it because I would if I were trying to pitch something that I'd created, I'd be like, oh, of course we're gonna get a fire breather because more people will show up. So That's I, true, but you could be kind of get it. You could be literally asked to do like a TED talk or like at a medical conference, and you'd be like, I brought my fire breather. And if we like, could bring sure. a fire breather on tour, I didn't learn that at clown school. If I did. I might do. You no, took I the wrong elective. With my heart condition, absolutely yeah. not. Would I be <laughs> Your taking heartburn? in fire? <laughs> so uh, yeah, I already have heartburn. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, he's this opening act, and because he could eat anything, and this is by the way where I think either the lore seeps in or the research I was doing wasn't fully explaining it to me, but it sounds like it wasn't just that he was eating anything; it was that he was swallowing things whole, like. Not like kind of like fire breathing, like just opening up the gullet and letting things go down. Okay. 
Um, and so that was his act where he would just swallow basically anything. Gross. And he, I guess, also at the time became friends with uh, like thieves who worked with him. And as he was doing his show, they would pickpocket the audience. Oh, well, that OK, that's fun. I mean, no, it's not fun. It's not good, but <laughs> it's interesting. It's fun <laughs> as like a, a cartoon, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> as like a fictional story. OK, interesting. So I guess he ends up like becoming a street performer and doing this kind of stuff in multiple cities because then he ends up moving to Paris and doing this for a while. And here are just some of the things he would eat. Oh, God. These are, this is just a few examples, so keep that in mind. He would eat items like corks, <gasps> rocks, Ugh. which, like, Geo also eats rocks, so, like, whatever, you're not <laughs> That's special. True. Yeah, nice try. Bags of coins, which, <gasps> ironic, because wasn't he doing this for money? Well, maybe, yeah, then he keeps it in there. It poops it out later. Oh, like other people's coins. Okay. I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, like, what if he just like showed off his own bag of coins and then just kept eating the same bag of coins? Yeah, because while you were talking, my mind started to wander. No offense. And I started. (laughs) (laughs) You and probably everyone else. No, I'm just teasing. But I was thinking, well, what if you, what if he pickpocketed, had people pickpocket this is a very like um david blaine thing where like oh the the little thief would wander around pickpocket and then he would like hold up someone's wallet and swallow it and be Mm -hmm. like see it's part of the show but then Uh he gets to go home and like poop out the guy's it is definitely the street savvy business way so right uh, i you're probably right um he would also eat or swallow quote dozens of apples in a row well that's so gross. Like, imagine, like, a whatever a bushel of apples is. How do you... And gulp, uh, gulp, gulp. That's horrible. And that makes me think it had to be swallowing, right? Because, like, I don't want to watch someone eat 12 Chew apples. Up an- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had to be swallowing it. Which, and so, here's the other thing, though. He allegedly would also do this with live animals. And I'm sorry. That's, that's where I was worried we'd be going. And I don't... glad. I'm not glad we ended up there. I'm really not. Uh, so not only did he must have had like this, not only must have he had a massive fucking throat to be able to do these kinds of things, but also like, I think one reference said he had like a deformed jaw. That was the quote from the source. Oh, like a um, snake, like unhinge it. Yeah. He could unhinge it. Yeah. Blech. Um, I can't imagine any other way you can just swallow an apple. Like Exactly. So I'm going to just roll with that source because other I didn't see any other medical explanation for how it's fitting in his face. Disgusting. Speaking of medical things, here is a medical memoir that actually discussed the, uh, Terrer's case. Okay. Just to let you know how wild, like how uh, baffled even doctors were for their time. Mm. Let a person imagine all that domestic or wild animals, the most filthy and ravenous, are capable of devouring, and they may form some idea of the appetite as well as the wants of Terrer. Oh, okay. It was like, you can think of anything, this thing, this guy eats it. <sighs> also, speaking of doctors, eventually Terrer, this is like one of my favorite stories of him, I guess, if there's such a thing. He ended up having to go to the hospital for, duh, a bowel obstruction. Yeah, no shit. Because I don't know how he's... Pa- how do you pass a whole apple? I, I guess how do you your pass stom- 12 in a row? Yeah, like, does your stomach have the time to break that up? I doubt it. Mm. So, or rocks? <laughs> what? Um, like, What about apple-sized rocks? Like, how are you <laughs> passing that? How are you... Where is it going after Rock-sized apples? You're really screwed no matter what. <laughs> well he okay so he goes to the doctor and he's like there i can't he's like owie my belly and they're like well <laughs> owie my tuchus it's not coming out my tuchus. <laughs> and so uh while he was there because i guess he's just like hungry for well yes he's hungry that no pun intended but he's like craving attention so badly that as he's there for a bowel obstruction because he will eat anything, he looks at his surgeon. He is like, you want to see something? I could eat your pocket watch. No. Uh, and no, I'm sure, he doesn't. I'm sure the surgeon should have been like, dude, like, are, why are you here? Like, you figure that out first and then ask me if you want to eat my pocket yeah, watch. Yeah, think this through. 
And the surgeon's response was, if you eat my pocket watch, I'm going to have to cut it out of you because right. I'm a surgeon. <laughs> like, I will have to. And you already have a blockage in there. Right. Like, I please don't make me slice you open to get my watch back. To get my grand grandpappy's watch out of there. <laughs> so uh, he ended up not eating the watch. But I thought that was, like, a, a, probably some good insight into, like, what this 100%, guy thinks. A hundred percent. I love that the surgeon was like, no. Right. So what additionally shocked many audiences, I mentioned this already, was that he was just so small, but he was eating. I mean, imagine someone that like is like, I'm saying so small, like 100 pounds is like he's the size of a, like a tiny little flower. Thumbelina. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, but I mean, imagine someone who's like really of any whatever average yeah. weight means. That's gross. But imagine like someone who's about 100 pounds maybe even 200 pounds, even 300 pounds, and just them eating a bushel of apples, like that yeah. would not look right on the human body. It, like, I feel like you would see apples coming out of their no, little No, but you're 100% right. If you're at 100 pounds, just on like a scientifically speaking level, you're 100 pounds and you have 12 apples in your body, doesn't that add like 10% of your own weight right? back onto your body? <laughs> not right? really, but you know, but yeah, you'd think you'd see like the lumps of apples in your belly, like a cartoon. Yeah, so that's I think that's why people always comment on it because they're like this little little fella, like you could just see the food coming out or the pocket watches in his stomach. Ooh. So in seventeen ninety two, he's twenty years old now, and Terrer joins the French Revolutionary Army. And during this, food was being rationed, so he was like really not feeling hot because oh, he I bet. was he was eating less food than an average nor an average average meal so wow uh and basically he became extremely ill extremely frail uh, his oh. hair was thinning and he already had um he was known to already have like really wild excess skin which like duh if you're filling up your stomach and then all of a sudden it's empty oh sure yeah i guess he would be stretching it out yeah, so I guess his excess skin was drooping more. Oh, no. Um, but there's a rumor that uh, when he wouldn't eat, this is where I think, like, I don't know if it's lore or just plain old town gossip, that it's just sad. But uh, there was a rumor that when he wouldn't eat and he was hungry and there was nothing in his stomach, his stomach would hang so loosely that he could wrap it around his torso like a belt, oh, which my. is, like, just a graphic image. But... I guess it's to let you know how how obvious it must have been to people when he had his stomach full versus when it wasn't full. Right, right, right. Um, he would also, during this time when the food was being rationed and he was getting really sickly, he also would sweat like crazy. And apparently throughout his time, like throughout his, not just time in the military, but throughout his life because he was eating so much stuff and probably as a street performer, he was eating even worse things because he was like just eating like showing off and stuff yeah animals and like Ugh. like raw live animals so he was known to have a horrible smell <gasps> um yeah because just anything was rotting in his stomach until it passed That's through disgusting um apparently there was an 1819 1819 medical journal that mentioned his smell that said that he smelled like, quote, someone whose diet consisted of massive amounts of food and non-food items, which is the most vague Wait way to... Wait a second. <laughs> like, that, you smell like someone who is inside and outside. What? Yeah, like, <laughs> you what? smell like you ate food and also not food. Yeah, so that wasn't... Um, I just thought that was kind of a ridiculous quote, but <laughs> there were... I saw in other sources, though, that apparently he smelled so bad that he... Like, you couldn't even be within, like, 20 feet of him. Um, apparently, some another source said that you could physically see vapors coming out of oh, him. Oh, like the, like Like the Pepe Le Pew odor lines. Oh, no. They, like, you could see them floating out of him, allegedly. Um, but so anyway, he, he basically, he was not looking hot. And then all of a sudden, he goes to the military, and his entire physiology is changing, and he, like somehow his body can't take it because it's so used to a different way of life sure so the the doctors in the military actually green light him to have four times the amount of food that Whoa. other military people are eating um which can you imagine the jealousy and no. the rage if you were that guy yeah yeah oh you get four of our meals Ugh. 
Uh, and that, by the way, I mean, he's used to eating like so much more food than even right. that, that his 400% meal is not good enough for him. Right. Eventually, they even try giving him 15 times <gasps> the average meal, and that's still enough. And whenever they, at or this point, still not enough. It's sorry, it's still not enough. Right. And eventually, the military doctors are like, we have to test this. Like, what is this guy up to? And like, this is our new weapon, actually. Yeah. <laughs> right. We're going to use you. Well, basically, all they find is that no matter how much food they gave him, like the worst side effect they could come up with was the fact that he would just get sleepy after a meal, which all of us can relate to. Right. That part isn't really that unique, I guess. Yeah. So uh, during these tests that they gave him, there here are some of the things that he ate. <clears throat> they are all animals. Sorry. Uh, he swallowed a lot of raw meat. It didn't matter what animal it was. It was just raw. He'd eat and it. And alive, right? Sometimes alive. Oh, that's right? horrible. Uh, he apparently would eat entire eels in one bite. <gasps> oh! Somehow I was not even expecting that. That's... It gives me, like, the heebie-jeebies. He apparently loved snake meat. I was worried you were going to say and snake. I don't know if that means alive or... Can you imagine can you? eating like a python? I'm sure that's not what they were giving him. But can you imagine eating a, like a boa constrictor? Can you imagine it, even like, eating just like a, guarded, a garter snake and you just like I swallow honest, it alive? I got to be honest. The thought of it is out of control. I'm breaking it's out really into sad. a sweat. I'm so like repulsed and freaked out. Especially as someone who's not a snake person, like even being next to a snake in it, not the concept, not even being that I have to put it inside of my stomach <laughs> 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 or inside of my mouth. Just imagine? being in the, the mouth part is the worst. I think like the putting, well, oh my well, God. especially if it's alive, is it like fighting back? That's what I'm wondering. Is it going to bite you? Ugh. Well, also apparently he ate lizards, um, the, the entire eels really gets me because eels are like extra slippery snakes. <laughs> the, the, bleh, bleh. I'm Honestly, so repulsed. I'm so repulsed. Um, he, I'm so He's sorry. He's going to get sepsis. Uh, well, he doesn't. <laughs> um, I'm so sorry, but he did eat cats and dogs and he <gasps> would get from it. He would get literal hairballs. The end. Um, Fuck me. This is. I am telling myself they were not alive. I'm I don't know. I'm telling myself this is part of the lore. It has even to be. It's not. It has to be. How big must your esophagus and jaw be for you to fit a whole, like, best case scenario? It's the worst case scenario for us, but best case scenario, it's a newborn puppy dog. Like, but, like, how, like, how do you get something that size in your mouth? I don't get it. It does. It has to be lore, right? I'm, making, I'm telling, I'm make, telling myself it's lore. It has to be lore. Um, and so here's, of the things that those were some of the things I saw him eat while they were testing him, which like good to know there were other people who were, like signed off on that. Like you couldn't just make him swallow food the size of a cat. Like why'd he have to eat a cat? I think they were just fucking around. I guess so. Well, one of the crazier ones, crazier than animals is uh, he swallowed a wooden box with a note inside of it and then passed it through <gasps> and the note was still intact. <gasps> so remember, these are military doctors and you already guessed it, but they were like, okay, you're our newest weapon. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I was too dumb to realize that that was actually the next step in the story. <laughs> you were on it. So now the doctors and the higher ups are like, cool, 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 cool. You're now a spy for us. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. You were our opening act, but now you're actually a, an international spy. Thank you, Blaze. Blaze brought me coffee. Thank Look you, Blaze. Oh, Mothman believes in you. Oh, that's he said fun. he had to pick between ten different Mothman mugs. So that sounds right. I used my my Rainbow Mothman mug from you earlier. So you are welcome. Yeah, thank uh, you. So what were you saying earlier? Like, oh, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. For sure. You're our opening act, but for <laughs> sure, for sure, we're now sending you into the battlegrounds to you're, eat some. You're now a military spy to eat, eat all their cats. To, to well, to eat wooden boxes with notes in it, and then go into enemy lines, and then bring information even better to undercover spies. But here's the thing: mission number one, he fails because he does he pass it too quickly? No, he's just so bad at being a spy. Oh, 
<laughs> he just wasn't trained for it. They were just like, you have this skill. And so now you like have to, without any training, go be a spy. What? So like, for example, he could not speak German. Like, oh, well, that would be, uh, that would pose probably quite a conundrum. And so he was caught on his literal first mission. Um, luckily, what they didn't even tell him, I think, the first mission where he like got in and passed this box through his system and information was supposed to be in there. They didn't even tell him that it was a fake note and there was nothing written on the paper. So his first mission, when he got busted, I think they knew they he might probably get busted. Knew. Yeah. So they were like, they didn't tell him, but it was just a test and he actually didn't give away any secrets, <laughs> but he did become a prisoner of war. And that was a, the, and <laughs> they were like, that's too bad. Anyway, <laughs> They were like, well, we took a chance. Honestly, we saved 14 meals a day. That Hon- we can just Honestly, keep. I feel like that was someone's call. They were mm-hmm. like, budgetary wise, it might help us. He's got to go. So he was a prisoner of war. So he was tortured. And the way they tortured him was by starving him. <gasps> and uh, when he got out, he got back to the military doctors and he just begged for help for a cure to the his hunger oh which like terrible this is like the 17 1800s i can't even imagine what the medicines looked like at the time for this they probably right. gave him cocaine and said get over it or something uh, uh, yeah i was gonna say which honestly would probably make you more hungry so i don't yeah. know what they were doing so nothing worked and eventually after he was like his time in the military was over he just was like so he had given up on ever finding a cure and oh it's so sad there were times he was so desperate to just satiate himself that he was eating garbage. Um, mm. And then because he was still in contact with a couple doctors who were just, I don't know if they were fully researching him, but I think they were committed to trying to find a cure. And so they would check in on him every now and then. Right. I don't totally know the backstory to that, but I know he was talking to a few doctors who follow him throughout the rest of his life. Um but so he's eating garbage at one point. He's eating like old animal scraps where he can find them, like anything he can eat. Cause he's also having a hard time finding a job. Sure. Um, and it gets so bad that I guess while he's at the hospital for his, for like talking to his own doctors, he starts drinking other patients blood <gasps> after they were being leached. Oh my God. And Was then he eating par- the leeches. Okay. I'm uh, so honestly, I don't know. Out. I'm I don't so know. I feel out. like you have to at least have a limit for yourself. You're like, I can't eat something that will try to eat me from the inside. Oh, good right? point. Good point. But then again, he's eating like maybe live snakes. Like, Ugh, oh my god! How do you every... not get bitten from inside? Like, oh, I'm so grossed out. Or like, like I said, I don't think he put a whole boa constrictor down his stomach. But like, imagine something trying to like attack your organs or something. You know, You'd think like, they would. Yeah. Anyway. <sighs> Uh, so he's now drinking other patients' blood, and at uh. one point he's found in the morgue eating corpses. <gasps> so oh now he's God. turned cannibal. Yeah. So in 1794, uh, while he's at a hospital he goes to for his own issues, a 14-month-old toddler goes missing. No. We um, don't know. We don't know. We don't know. But it's never been proven. But he was a highly uh, primed. He, everyone thought it was him. <gasps> and he's chased out of the hospital. We don't know what happened. We don't know the fate of the okay. baby. We don't know the fate of. We don't know anything more than that. But the baby went missing, and everyone went. Maybe it's the cannibal. Oh my god. Okay. Basically. Um. So we don't know if he hurt the kid, but. People chase him out of the hospital and he went into hiding for like four years. So we actually, if he was already eating like body parts, like human body parts before then, and then he went into hiding for four years and we don't know what he was up to in those four years. I can't imagine what he was up to. Um, But eventually he pops up four years later at another hospital and he asks to see his original doctor. Um, The doctor gets there and Terrer tells him Hey, I have another bowel obstruction because I have been on back on my bullshit. I've been doing my <laughs> oops. <laughs> uh, I've been doing my usual stuff, and I have a bowel obstruction. And I need your help because I swallowed a fork, and <gasps> it's not passing properly. So the doctor 
checks him out and i don't even know if the fork was the situation but the doctor ended up finding out one of the reasons he felt so ill is because he actually had um like the ending stages of tuberculosis (gasps) um and so terere died very quickly after that oh my god he's like oh i have a fork in my stomach actually that's not the problem i mean it's not not the problem right right. it's like one of probably a hundred problems yeah like lower it down on the list a few pegs right 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 uh and so immediately once he dies doctors are like all right we gotta research the shit out of this body and so they All they found, basically, it wasn't like a shocking amount of information, but they did find that he had a very large stomach, which doesn't surprise me if you're shoving anything and everything in there. It was going to stretch out, right? Yeah. Um, He had a very large liver and a very large esophagus. Um, uh, There's even a rumor, which this makes me feel like it has to be lore, but who knows. Allegedly, his esophagus was so wide that when he opened his mouth wide enough, you could directly see his stomach. (gasps) i don't remember like is stomach stapling a thing anymore because i feel like if your stomach is that big and maybe that's why i mean it feels like a like a like a never-ending curse of if your stomach is this big you have to fill it up every time but what if your stomach was that big like well yeah i know there's definitely um there's definitely surgeries yeah to basically they shrink your stomach okay yeah i forget stomach stapling i feel like that was a very like 90s thing. That, that was a thing does um, it happen I don't, anymore you know i don't know if they yeah ga- well i know they do gastric i think they still do it i'm pretty okay. sure i there's probably i don't know anything about that world but um but yeah i w- i wonder if in today's world i wonder what tests they would have done on him while he was alive to like try to get him to not be hungry anymore do we know what like the problem was i mean he must have had some sort of Yes, but oh, okay. uh, one one bullet beforehand yeah. uh, is that he had a very large stomach, a very large liver, a very large esophagus. But as much as they wanted to do more research on him, apparently when they were like trying to look through his organs, the smell was so <gasps> bad that they just couldn't even continue Whoa. research. They were like, we'd rather just let this die a mystery. That's so sad. Um, I guess while they were looking through him, though, they found just like so many infections. And it's probably part of the reason that he was smelling so bad is there were infections in his stomach. And he was known to have like a lot of like gas issues because he was eating anything. So, I mean, imagine just burping up and like farting out a bunch of like infections, Yeah, you know? Yeah, caused so, by, like, dead, raw animals. I mean, it's just, yeah. like, of course it's going to be bad. And imagine if you had an infection and then you eat more dead, raw animal on top of that and it just gets worse and worse. And so um, I think they just put his body away and they were like, we don't we don't even want to wow, know. Wow, how sad. So the main theories today are that he had hyperthyroidism, sure. which was uh, gives you some eating issues. And then they also thought a yeah. parasite, which makes you really hungry. They thought maybe might be both like he had parasites from something he ate that just made things worse. And on right. top of that, he had a hyperactive thyroid. Um, I also saw that the name for abnormal hunger is polyphagia. Oh, I think that's I'm thinking I'm pronouncing it right. But this is apparently a very common symptom of diabetes and endo- endocrine diseases. Oh. Um, so in today's world, that would definitely be like the starting symptom they'd pay attention to, or that's what that would be on a medical chart somewhere for him of like, oh, he has polyphagia because he can't stop eating. Okay. But as for a cause, they might look into diabetes or, or thyroid issues or something like that. Sure, sure. I mean, that makes sense. And also, I do wonder, like, if you just had one good x-ray back in the day, would you have been able to see a parasite? Like, maybe he just had, like, a really crazy tapeworm. Need, like, a CAT scan or something. Yeah. Um. Wow. Ooh, a tapeworm. Ooh. Okay. All of this is so... Yeah, I mean, he probably ate 500 tapeworms as part of his fucking <laughs> opening act. He's a eating snakes. Bucket of tapeworms. Yeah, right? <sighs> so, and I'm sure any... Like, there are animals that living or dead or raw or not there's probably just things we're not supposed to eat that maybe has Wait, I things think that is how you get a tapeworm like raw oh yeah from eating raw meat yeah he probably had like 85 tapeworms living in there that's gotta be it well i mean as you know me being a professional that's gotta be it <laughs> called I, it <laughs> uh, 
M. Schultz, M.D. <laughs> um, so despite how wild this case is, it can't totally be lore because this case was covered in several, like, well-respected medical journals by well-respected physicians. Right. Um, so... Anyway, if here's what I got to say about this, though, Christine. And as I say this, let me let me screen. Let me not screenshot something for you, but let me just. Send I thought you little... said let me scream. And I was like, OK, you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm glad that you would have been there for me. But... Listen, I would have muted you, but I would have been there. Well, you don't get to mute what I'm about to show you. Mm. Um, I'm going to send you a link. And okay. as I send you this link, I want you to know that. After everything I've told you about Terrer, you might be thinking, this needs to be a puppet opera. How did you know? <laughs> well, because you're not the first person to think that. Oh, I thought um, I had an original thought. Because there is this uh, theater company called Tobacco Factory Theaters, and they came out with a puppet chamber opera. No, they didn't. Uh, and it is apparently called, the show is called the depraved appetite of Terrer the freak yikes whoa but i'm gonna give i'm gonna send you this little link and i need you don't even look at anything beforehand i just want you to start at 52 seconds like pause it start immediate, at 52 okay like pause it immediately click okay. to 52 and then press start because okay. i feel like that gives you the best Is the best idea we're able to put on youtube or i mean instagram it, it sure is okay i paused it now let me go to 52 so you think we'll be able to put this on Instagram? I think so. I think a quick little clip little just to let you know. Okay, I'm already disturbed. I'm going to play it. <gasps> it's so silly. You can stop it if you want. It's just that one little clip. M, <laughs> I take it back. Nobody needs to see this. I'm so hungry. Honestly, <laughs> sp spoke to my soul. But the visuals really pulled me back. I don't love it's it. It's not I what I was it. expecting. Oh, ew. They like turned it into like, I think they called it a monstrous chamber or monster monster chamber opera or something. Um, but yeah, so some theater I'm company. I'm so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is my opera. Like I get like that I can relate to on such a level. But then the, the visuals of him just like swallowing things. Oh, the, no. The vibe was very much like I feel like this theater company would have absolutely accepted the pitch from Forgetting Sarah Marshall where Jason Segal's, uh he's like create. Did you ever watch that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like his whole thing is he's trying to come up with like a vampire Dracula oh, yeah. puppet show, like puppet <laughs> opera. And I feel like they would totally be ready for that at next season, you know? They've probably already done it. They probably watched Forgetting Sarah Marshall and were like, oh, yeah, this is for us. Well, so, okay. I just wanted to, I saw that. I went to YouTube, obviously, and tried to look up this guy. And actually, it was by accident because I was just trying to figure out how to pronounce his name. And that was like the first name that came, <laughs> came up. up. And I was like, well, that checks. That checks. Well, this needs to be in Christine's brain forever. Thank you so much, <laughs> Em. I love that for me. You're, Thank you. You're welcome. Well, bef before I go, I don't know if we'll ever be on this topic again. So I just wanted to also give you an additional um, secondary factoid. Great. Uh, um, so when you think of Terrer, I wonder if medical f physicians looked further back in history to see if anybody else ever had this condition because what they would have found if they did so because Terrer was from the seven late 1700s but there was actually another guy that i mean Terrer was really going through it and like desperate for a cure but there was someone else in the past who had this exact same condition and really spun it into i think what he considered one of his his best personality traits um mm. and he really took off with it and thrived and made it like part of his like career um and it was this guy named nicholas wood and he suffered from the same condition which makes me think that like doctors must have referenced him at some point to terrere but i don't sure. see any connection i don't see any references where they were connected um but nicholas wood he was born in the in the 1580s so 200 years before okay um Terrer was and he was nicknamed in town as the great eater of kent <laughs> he was also known as nick the great duke all punch and the kentish tenterbelly 
<laughs> they loved their nicknames back then, huh? Yeah, and I guess I I'm sure if they couldn't come up with a cure in the you know, 200 years later in the 1580s, poor Nicholas Wood was like, I guess there's nothing I can do about this. I better just monetize it. Yeah. And so he saw this as like a fun little bar trick that he would do at like public gatherings or like if there was a festival in town, he would like volunteer to wow people with this. So in a way he was also a street performer, but he seemed to be like really all for it versus like desperately looking for a cure. And I wonder if that's like the... Well, I don't know. I was going to say, I wonder if that's a product of the times considering like this other guy had to live through rationing and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. So sad. Um, And so he would, his big thing was he loved to make public bets with people on how much he could eat. And (laughs) to date, there are only on record two bet, two bets that he did not win. Really? Um, one bet, I guess, was like, I don't know what the actual goal was, but he ended up in a literal food coma. <gasps> um, and then the second time, apparently he bounced back. And then he... <laughs> and then he a, took another bet? Great. He took, uh, he took several other bets, but the only other one he ever lost was when someone dared him to eat 12 loaves of bread soaked in beer. <gasps> and he got... It's not that he probably couldn't fill his stomach with that, but he got so drunk on his way to finishing the oh. food that he passed out. <laughs> so that one, I think he calls a technicality, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he's, drinking, not eating. Exactly. He's so, like, yeah. I could have. Here are some of the other things he reportedly ate. And this is in one sitting. He ate 60 eggs, oh. lamb, I don't know if, like a lamb, a maybe, lamb. <laughs> and multiple pies. In oh. another in another one sitting, he ate apparently eighty four rabbits. Okay, well that's repulsive. Another in one sitting, he ate a whole raw sheep. Mm-mm. In another one sit session, he ate thirty dozen pigeons. <gasps> Oh my God, this guy is a monster. 30 dozen. That's 360 pigeons? Oh. 360 pigeons in one fucking sitting. That's disgusting. Another time in one sitting, he ate a pig and then three pecks of plums. And I looked up pecks. It's a similar equivalent to like a bushel. Apparently a bushel is around like 45 pounds of something, but a peck is around 12 pounds of something. So he had 36 pounds of plums and a pig in one sitting. Oh my God, this guy. And eventually he was, I think because he was becoming like such like a local name someone came up to him and was like here's the thing i want to put on like this like eating exhibition and i want you to star in it and basically the the theme would be uh you would be eating the meals of giants and people can come watch you eat the meals that giants would eat and so some of the things he was going to eat at this exhibition or exhibit i don't know why i'm saying exhibition um he would have to eat an entire calf Mm. and like not a leg calf like a cow calf um he had to eat a wheelbarrow of tripe which like couldn't you give him a wheelbarrow of something good you know like <sighs> tripes i personally not my not, thing not my jam um and then also this one i could fucking eat for sure this is a quote apparently he would eat puddings that could span the thames the the thames the thames i as i said it i realized it so stupid puddings uh and which means here- dessert right yeah i also could just do like a river of chocolate pudding just pudding <laughs> just a snack pack <laughs> <laughs> just like belly flop into pudding um but so there was a pamphlet for this event that was going to be put on and it was starring nicholas wood the great eater of kent and so the pamphlet's name was the great eater of kent or part of the admirable teeth and stomach exploits of Nicholas Wood, which <laughs> teeth and stomach exploits. I feel like that should be what we call whenever I go to like an all you can eat buffet is like <laughs> the admirable teeth and stomach exploits of M. I for one will not be buying a ticket to that. No offense. Uh, you don't want to see me belly flop into a, a pudding the size I've of a river. I've seen it for free. I don't need to pay. Well, so apparently. I don't know if you picked up on this and it's very interesting that you mentioned my favorite Joey Jaws chestnut earlier. 
uh, because this exhibit more or less led to the invention of eating competitions oh, and today's, I see. today's MLE or uh, Major League Eating. So Nicholas Wood's <laughs> career ended when he was dared to eat an entire mutton shoulder, bone and all, and during that he cracked all but one tooth. <gasps> and since I he did, you were gonna say ribs, but teeth also makes sense. Well, like to eat the bone too, like that's ugh. disgusting. But so he cracked all but one tooth, and I guess he could never really eat anything again after that. But Aww. while we're here. And I am discussing the MLE. I didn't know if you had a favorite food, and I could tell you what the current record in Ugh. Major League Eating is for how many could be eaten. Gross. Um, we got burritos. We got eggs. We got watermelon, donuts, oh. chicken wings, matzo balls, ham and potatoes. Shit. You pick. You pick. Pizza, okay. hot dogs, fries. I really like. Um, I mean, this is before I became a vegetarian, but I like cauliflower wings now. But what about chicken wings? How many chicken wings? Chicken wings. Okay, let's see. Wings. Oh my god, there's 14. <laughs> there's, wait, hang on. There's short form wings, which oh, I think gosh. mean like normal like bar wings. Then there's buffalo chicken wings. I guess it's bone in versus bone out. You have to think too, but I would say bone in. Okay, well, I have a boneless option right here for you. What's that? Boneless, uh, nine pounds in 10 minutes. Oh, God, nine pounds? Yep. And then okay, as for just... Hooters, particular Hooters oh, the... wings. Yeah, I would like to know that. 281 in 10 minutes. Gross. Wow. Wow, they've okay. got everything here. There's even like spray cheese in a can. There's Hall Halloween candy. Oh, how much Halloween candy? Halloween candy. Four pounds in six minutes. That's not good for your poor Tom. For uh, milk and cookies. 48 Oreos and half a gallon of milk in two minutes and 28 seconds. Ew. Two minutes? No. Not Here's even the... not even two and a half minutes. 50 Oreos and half a gallon of milk. This is what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Back in middle school, like eighth grade, I remember my school held a chicken wing eating competition in the theater. And we all had to go and watch people uh, sit on stage and eat chicken wings in their school uniforms. <laughs> Why? Why? I don't know. Gross. I have no idea. It was so gross. Well, uh, here's one that I think I no, I couldn't beat that. What am I talking about? Uh, I was thinking there's a peanut butter and banana sandwich record, which is oh, which like think about the peanut butter on the roof it would of your get mouth. Sticky. How much? How many is that? Thirty six sandwiches in ten minutes. What? That's insane. That's crazy. Thirty six. I'm actually also, I'm actually shocked by this one. 20 hard-boiled eggs in 84 seconds. I feel like yeah. that should definitely be beaten. I've watched that happen. It's not pleasant. Hmm. Um gross. I will yeah, it's gross. And also like I know that this is so dumb and like I every time I am watching one of those eating competitions, I say this and I feel like my mom, but like they're not even enjoying the food. Like what's the point? Like they don't feel good. It doesn't feel good to eat that many and like I will also I'm, like like what if your like stomach explodes? Like course, is it yeah, is like it you, worth it? No, like you don't feel well. I'm sure it takes like weeks to recover. Like you're not actually eating the food. You're just like swallowing it whole. I mean, I none of it sounds appealing to me. I don't get it. Maybe Ugh. this is a controversial opinion. I'm not into the eating competitions. I, I'm really into it for the stat. Like I only knew about like I went through a phase uh, one of my hyperfixations was major league eating and I um I was really into it for the information, but anytime I try to watch one of the videos, I can't do it. I get like really grossed out. I don't know. It's like, I don't. I just like knowing the, did you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it's like a, a weird conversation starter. But when it comes to like, like 14 and a half pounds of burritos in 10 minutes, like, <gasps> like why? Like you eat one Chipotle burrito. You tell me how your stomach feels at night. And now they're saying eat 14 pounds of them. How about 24 pounds of salmon chowder in six minutes? <gasps> I'm like... going to throw up. <laughs> That's disgusting. Oh, man. It's what just is so salmon chowder? No. 190. Think of the spice, though. 191 pickled jalapenos in six and a half minutes. You're going to get you're gonna, an ulcer. You're going to have a lot of a lot of poopy problems. As someone, <laughs> legitimately, as someone yeah. with many ulcers, you're going to get an ulcer. And it's, it, by the way, it doesn't feel good. It's not. Oh, I'm sorry. There's one for butter. Ew, how much butter? Seven sticks in five minutes. Oh my God, seven God. sticks of butter. 
anyway, I keep going and going. If you want to go look it up yourself, just look up MLE records. But um, yeah, I, I'm glad I got to cover that. That's a, that was a new genre of a story, but I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't have field. something. I promise there was meant to be up until like eight hours ago. I had all intentions of telling a ghost story. And this just is kind Please of, Please don't worry. Happened. This was great. I mean, Sometimes you tell stories about like cryptids and stuff like the Tizzy Wizzy that are great, but they're not even remotely real. This one was at least like a real thing that happened, you know? It is a shocking, a shocking story. <laughs> wow. Anyway, wow. that is uh, Terrare. I feel unwell. Um... <laughs> well, I have a story for you that I wish were fictional, but is true. I have the story of the Texarkana Moonlight Murders. I feel like I've heard of this one. Really? I know uh, I know nothing beyond the name of the actual, uh, like what you just said. I don't know anything else. But I feel like that, the that name string of words familiar? has been said in front of me before. Also called the Texarkana Phantom. So if the that's familiar Texarkana. at all. Arcana Phantom. Hmm. No. Do you know about Texarkana? Is it half Texas, half Arkansas or something? Is so that what this is? Actually, yeah, it's three different states. So you got Texas and Arkansas, and then there's one more. Louisiana? Yes! You're so smart. That's kind of like we have a, a, a Bristol. It's not like we, ha we don't have all the names combined, but there's a city called Bristol, but it's like part of the county lines is in Tennessee, part of it's in Virginia, and part of it's in North Carolina. Oh, geez. So... It's like if you say you live in Bristol, it's like technically you're just like in the tri city. Which one? You know, yeah. um, I love well, places like that. I always thought that'd be so fun to live in a spot like that, that is for no reason. For no reason until you have to fill out your work paperwork and your taxes. Right. And you're like, shit, I'm so confused. It's like, let me move five minutes down the road where it's better taxes. Where, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> no one blame you. So, Texarkana, named after three states Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Uh, the municipality exists in Bowie County, Texas, but also, like you were just saying, in a different county, Miller County in Arkansas. So basically people, uh, when they were, I watched a documentary about this on Amazon Prime called Murder in the Moonlight. Um, it was all right. Uh, I feel like, <laughs> eh, give or take. <laughs> yeah, I feel like uh, it was a little dry. Um, the interviews were a little long, but uh, some of the information for was from there so i thank them for uh getting me that info but anyway um in the documentary they would say like oh well she moved from the texas side to the arkansas side and vice versa so mm -hmm. clearly this is a city where like you have to specify what side you're on got it so you can stand in the center of the steps of the post office building, <gasps> like the federal building. This Ooh. is a very M. Schultz situation. <laughs> and you can be in two states at once on the steps there, um, which is <sighs> kind of fun because you can have a picnic and one of you sits on one side and one of you sits on the other side. I must tell you, Allison, are you listening? No? Okay. Um, <laughs> there's really nothing I want more than to like do one of I like I know it's like probably I know chuggy is a word that we've mentioned often or maybe it's just like cringe in general. But like what was that movie? There was a movie where like they cross the city line just to take a picture of being on the other side of the I don't know. I just, Garden I, State. I have no idea. I just want <laughs> I just want to drive to a border and then take a picture of one of us on one side of the border and well and i mean we can do that at my house because like you can just walk oh, yeah. across the bridge and you can stand on the bridge and i'll take a picture of you i'd lose my mind also i like there's nothing i dream of more than going to four corners oh i was gonna ask yeah that's like i can't think that's that's the best one i think in, that's in the, the US, classic yeah? right i would say that's the classic be in four states at once oh it blows my mind sorry texarkana but you've you didn't you, make it. You didn't make it on M's bucket list. Um, <laughs> You're in my top three, I guess. But there you go. Four Good Corners job. has you beat. So there are all kinds of special tax exclusions and other laws that residents have to navigate, uh, which sounds like a real pain in the ass. And even though they're in two different states, oftentimes the city just kind of works together as one city because it's just easier that way. Sure. Um, despite that, Texarkana has two mayors. Oh. <gasps> Fun. Isn't that isn't that fun? Two fire departments, etc. So like they they are split. 
the in two, some ways. The two mayor situation feels like that office episode where it's it, like yes. co-managers. Honestly, it feels like a sitcom waiting to happen, yeah. like the two mayor's offices. Um, and so that combined with record temps of over 110 degrees makes this place sound kind of like um, – a rough place to navigate and uh-huh. live. <laughs> especially yeah. now with these record heats uh i feel like that would be i mean i'm sure we have listener do we have listeners there hi texarkana i don't know if you, even if you're not from there if you just happen to be there i'm already a little jealous of you yeah so. do you have to like tip your h&r block person <laughs> every year because i feel like i would feel i would at least get them a muffin basket just they need a like, hug Sorry. they need a hug yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the killings we're going to talk about took place in the 40s. So to be specific, 1946. And around this time, the population was around 45,000 people. Uh, So according to a PhD researcher on the following case, Texarkana had become a 24-hour city. And that was because there was this railroad that passed through. And uh, there was this demand for entertainment. And people were constantly coming and going, especially with the railroad going through town. And so um, if you think about it, it was actually probably even more active in 1946 than it is in 2022. But people who live there, let us know. So World War II had people moving throughout the country nonstop and surrounding areas were dry, as in like dry counties, no drinking allowed. So there were a lot of bars in Texarkana and people would like flock to Texarkana to drink. Mm. Got it. Not only that, but criminals would hop the border in town to escape crimes they committed on the other side. Okay. But also, <laughs> like, that would be my, fr- if I were a criminal, that would be my first move. I'd be right? like, hop talk- over. Talk about a loophole. Just, like, jump to your cousin's side of the state. Be like, yeah. I'm staying with my cousin this weekend. Yeah. Um, and that being said, with, you know, criminals kind of being able to navigate this place it was known as a rough place um crime wise and a member of the arkansas police at the time who had himself fought in world war ii actually said that texarkana is calloused to murder uh, oh. because it was that Damn. kind of yeah that kind of rough of a town but this case would end up kind of proving him wrong because when this case took place uh, it proved that the town was not necessarily calloused to murder <laughs> Right, yeah, like all of a sudden this one got singled out pretty good. Yeah, this one became um, became a problem. So, on a cool Friday night, February 22nd, 1946, the Phantom Killings began. Mm-hmm. 19-year-old Mary Jean Larry and her 25-year-old boyfriend Jimmy Hollis left a movie at the what was then called the Paramount Theater after a double date. They dropped the other couple home and then made their way to classic a lover's lane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and well. this was, as we probably all know, a secluded road where people would like hook up or make out. And so Mary Jean and Jimmy parked around what is now Richmond Road at about 1145 p.m. Pretty soon after, a man appeared beside the driver window and shined a flashlight inside at them. Forget it. Forget it. Forget yes. it. So wait, and did they, they think it was the cops or something? So they actually thought um, it was a prank. Like that so the flashlight shined and they couldn't see out because of this flashlight right um and all they saw so mary jean reported that there was a white sack over his head likely a pillowcase with holes cut out for the eyes i beg to differ i (laughs) I, i'm so sorry but you're out of your mind you're out of your mind mayor um so jimmy like i said thought maybe someone was playing a prank and he told the masked stranger you have the wrong guy like okay sorry i know you're probably trying to scare one of your buddies or something but like you got the wrong couple here way to be rational but also like in (laughs) in 2022 i can tell you that that's like exactly one of the outfits that i think like someone from the strangers was wearing oh interesting or it was like a it was like a well, I do. It was have, a bag over the uh, a bag over the face, and just the eyes were cut out. So I gross. do have a pop culture reference later. So, oh, um, okay, maybe we'll maybe we'll find out. Is it Casper? Because that's also very ghostly. <laughs> it's not Casper. Oh, okay, May- maybe also Casper. Um, so he says you have the wrong guy, but then the masked man pulls out a pistol, and Jimmy and Mary Jean are like, "Oh, okay, this is not a prank. This guy is for real." So the man orders Jimmy to get out and take off his own pants. And what? Yeah. This is like part of his MO. 
and some think maybe this was just a way to disarm him okay because like he just said take off your pants and then he struck jimmy so hard with the butt of the pistol that mary jean who was like uh a little bit farther away thought that the sound of his skull fracturing was a gunshot (gasps) whoa yeah and he's died he died yeah he did not die (gasps) whoa okay i know that's that's how we like thankfully we thankfully he survived um and so we we got this kind of you know story of what happened but yeah she thought that uh it was a gunshot but it was actually the sound of his skull fracturing whoa so jimmy's unconscious and the man starts kicking him beating him mercilessly uh and so mary jean who now assumes this is a robbery exclaims that they have no money but the man turns and strikes her and then orders her to run <gasps> ew i don't know why that's worse than it's somehow so creepy i think because it's so out of character yeah like, yeah like the one thing you would think they don't want you to do yeah it's and like, also I, f- I feel like i've seen those horrible stories where like they make you run and then when your back is turned they shoot you honestly it sounds like such a cat and mouse thing you know it's yeah. like run because you can't get very far or whatever like, oh, or like for run and for a second you think he's letting you go and you're free but it's much worse oh so basically he says run and so she starts running and he chases her of course and Then he asks, why are you running? And she says, you told me to. And he calls her a liar and then strikes her again. (gasps) Oh, so that it's just like, like I know. So twisted. Obviously going into this, I'm aware that this was not rational, but like it feels much less like you'd at least think it's irrational to us, but maybe he thought there was some sort of logical play to this. But right even that doesn't feel like he has his own stuff in order yeah yeah it feels um yeah it, it's sort of like even for a deranged killer it feels yeah. like nonsensical <laughs> which... yeah i don't know how else to, to phrase it but it feels i feel like i can at least usually follow the the logic yeah in some agreed. way Ugh. no yeah exactly and like we tried to predict what he was gonna do after he told her to run and like none of it was even what happened Jeez. um so it gets worse because he strikes her he calls her a liar strikes her again and when she collapses, he collapses he uses the gun to sexually assault her <gasps> yeah um and there are not really many details on that and i'm i'm good not going to share them anyway so if there good. were so the attacker was suddenly startled by oncoming headlights and he fled mary jean managed to stand up and she runs half a mile and finds help at the first house she sees meanwhile jimmy wakes up and flags a passing motorist for help who did what i guess you're supposed to do which is he continued down the road and then called police from a safe indoor location (laughs) oh yeah Yeah. but like you know it's hard to say because it's sort of like You'd think, like, stop the car and rescue this kid. Yeah. But I guess technically you're not supposed to let a stranger in your car. (laughs) You're supposed to go call for help. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I would do. I really don't. Uh, Well, I guess now we have cell phones, so I would have done that. But he goes and he calls the police from a safe indoor location. And uh, thankfully, they are able to rescue Jimmy. At the hospital, he is treated for three separate skull fractures, but... Somehow, miraculously, he remembers everything about the attack in detail. What? Yeah. I feel like the first, the second I would have seen someone get hit that hard in the head, I'd be like, well, they're of no help when it right. comes to telling the story. I mean, we thought he had died, but no, yeah. he survived and remembered the whole thing. So he tells police he had been attacked by a white man around 30 years old. Now, this is where things get a little complicated because... Mary Jean, who was also rescued, said the attacker was a black man wearing a mask. Oh. And so a little bit uh, a little bit confusing um, because there are cases where like a white woman will identify an assailant as black and then it turns out, you know, the assailant is not black. And especially, you know, this is the 1940s. So, mm-hmm. you know, it's sort of like you don't want to doubt victim accounts, but um 
and we, we don't can also doubt we can what also happened. look at history from a from a critical lens and yeah and... exactly and especially because both of them um you know had a completely different version and were pretty confident in what they saw uh but you know at the same time they both admitted that their vision was compromised by the flashlight shining in their eyes right. the attacker did wear a mask it was dark out and obviously they're going through a horrible trauma so all of this is very iffy um and it's just worth I guess, consideration. That's all. Sure. So at least the victims both agreed the attacker was six feet tall. But because of the conflicting accounts, police decided the couple must have known their attacker and were covering for him, which I don't necessarily think is the case. I don't um, either. That or it was a random act of violence. Uh, although where they were usually was known for being pretty quiet. It didn't really like track with Texarkana. Like that wasn't really the kind of violence that usually took place in the town. Um, in the end, there was really nothing to go on, but Jimmy Hollis, uh, the, the male, um, victim here, he warned police, quote, if you don't find him, he's going to kill someone. Mm. And let's and call does. that, let's call that foreshadowing. <laughs> right. I was going to say, uh, I have a feeling you wouldn't have, uh, covered it if it didn't somehow sadly the get worse. And yeah, no, it gets worse. Uh, unfortunately we're only on page two. So it was only a few weeks later on Sunday, March 24th, 1946, that the first bodies were found. Hmm. The night before, Saturday, 29-year-old Richard L. Griffin was out and about with his girlfriend of only six weeks, 17-year-old Polly Ann Moore. They also pulled over at a lover's lane, this time near U.S. Highway 67 West. And the next morning, a passing driver saw their car and thought, oh, it's an odd place to be parked in the morning. Uh, at a like a lover's lane so he approached and thought at first that the couple was asleep inside until he saw the blood mm. so richard and polly ann had been murdered sometime the night before richard was on his knees in the front seat and polly ann was lying face down in the back of the car oh god yeah both were shot in the back of the head and richard had been shot twice and there was some evidence to suggest that both were killed outside of the car and then placed back into the car, which is mm. kind of creepy. Uh, Richard's pockets were turned inside out. And at the time, this is kind of gross, local gossip assumed Polly Ann must have been sexually assaulted. But modern reports say there it's unclear. There's not really evidence one way or the other. Okay. Okay. Um, there was an extensive amount of blood pooled throughout the car and the ground outside. Uh, one person interviewed in the author of a book about this, uh, who was interviewed in the uh, documentary I mentioned, said that there was blood like pouring out of the sides of the car. Wait. And that's like wasn't like a, a, that wasn't. It was just there was so much blood that when they like opened the car, it was like pour, it like poured out of the car. Oh, my God. I was really hoping that was going to be like a... Hyperbole. Uh-huh. Uh, so at that... least not according to the author of the book on this case. That's so... I mean, obviously so awful. But, like, I also... I don't think my, my brain had ever realized that that could really happen. Yeah. That's I mean, awful. I don't I don't know the details beyond that. Um, so... The only evidence from the killer himself that they found at the scene was a single casing from a 32 cartridge pistol. Okay. Now, the only connection police could make between this murder and the attack uh, was the lover's lane aspect of both. And obviously, they didn't have this couple's uh, eyewitness testimony because both had died. Right. The other thing that they connected was that Richard's pants were down around his ankles. Uh -huh. Just like Jimmy's had been. But he wasn't, was he pistol whipped at all like the other guy was? Um, he was just shot twice. Okay. I don't know if. As far as I know. Okay. But who knows? Maybe the kill. this is all speculation. Maybe the killer was like, well, the guy survived when I did that. So now I have to shoot him. Who knows? Honestly, that's a really good point. Like maybe he didn't di risk, he was didn't like, want to risk I'm not, it. I, yeah. He's like, I'm not going to do that again. Right. So despite their age difference, apparently nobody in the victim's families objected to their relationship. So just to remind you, Polly Ann was 17 and Richard was 29. Mm -hmm. um, and she had just graduated from high school. Uh, they Their families were both supportive of their relationships. Um, they had no noted enemies. They, didn't ha they weren't in a fight with anybody. So it just se seemed like a dead end. 
Um, in a 2016 documentary, Polly Ann's brother Rocky remembered Polly Ann as a sweet and understanding person who was very well liked by everybody and also liked everybody. And for several years afterward, he wore his late sister's high school class ring in remembrance of her. And it's very sweet. It's very sweet. And Polly Ann herself was just deeply mourned and missed. Um, just very tragic story. There really was nobody to point fingers at. And now police had four victims. Two were dead, two alive. There was virtually no evidence and zero suspects. So they were kind of scratching their heads. Damn. And how, what was the time frame between the, the attacks? So the first one was February 22nd of 1946. And the next one was March. Um, let me see if I can find it. March 24th. So about a month. So like a month. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And then it was only several weeks later. So now we're at April 14th. So these are happening pretty close, like one yeah. a month, essentially. Yeah. Um, so April 14th of 1946, 16-year-old Paul Martin was visiting from out of town and picked up his elementary school friend, 15-year-old Betty Jo Booker. Now, Betty Jo was a talented saxophone player and had just finished playing a gig with the band Jerry Atkins and the Rhythmares. I, I, I have to get front row tickets. <laughs> and that's about all I can think about now. Rhythm airs, sorry. The Jerry rhythm Atkins airs. and the Rhythm Airs. And uh, they were playing at the VFW Club, so you probably could have just snuck on in there. You know what? Good to know. When yeah. I'm time traveling later, I'll uh, make sure to go <laughs> only there. <laughs> Stop at the VFW in Texarkana. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I want to say kind of a fun fact here, which is that apparently this band was not always made up of teenagers, but at this point... There were several teenagers in the band, including 15-year-old Betty Jo, who played saxophone for the band. And this is because mm -hmm. uh, the previous members who were adult men got drafted into World War II. And <gasps> we're looking at 1946. Right. And so the person who kind of took over the band invited a bunch of, like, high school Women. friends. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean. it, Well, yeah, and Betty Jo to come and... Uh, it's just cool because, you know, as a teenage girl at that time, like you wouldn't think you're, you'd be performing at the VFW, you know, that's in, so badass in like a legit band. And so it was pretty cool that she got to access that space, um, at that time. So the performance ran late and Paul picked up Betty Jo at about one thirty in the morning and the two of them drove to Spring Lake Park together to have some time alone. Hours later, still early in the morning, a family on their way through town saw a body on the side of the road sprawled out and mm. unfortunately it was paul's body wow. he had horribly been shot four times once through the nose oh my god once in the ribs from behind once through the hand and once through the neck whoa it feels like it was almost someone was just like shooting All in the air and just hoping something would it hit. makes me think of like defensive wounds though doesn't yeah, it like through the hand yeah. and through like it just makes me think of when people get shot through the hand because they're holding their yeah. hands up um which just gives me the creeps um so he'd been shot but they could not find betty joe they found his car about a mile away but they could not find betty joe so just, okay. I mean, full on panic. Yeah. When it came out that Betty Jo never got home the night before, a church-led search and rescue party set out to find her. Unfortunately, they did find her and she had passed away. Mm -hmm. um, it took them a few hours, but they found her a mile away from the car in the opposite direction. So that's kind of weird. So the car is here. Uh, Paul's a mile this way and Betty Joe's body's a mile this way. Oh, okay. Well, I wonder if it was the same like telling her to run. Oh, yeah. Good point. Oh, yeah. Gross. Gross. I don't, I don't know. Um, so they found her body and she had been shot twice. They did discover some genital bruising, but they weren't sure if this was at the hands of the killer, if he had raped her or if she had, uh, you know, had sex with Martin, with Paul, her friend. Um, and DNA evidence at this point was not a thing. Um, so they weren't sure where the bruising had come from. Uh, however, police determined that both victims were killed with the same weapon, the 32 caliber uh, pistol that was used to kill Richard and Polly Ann uh, weeks wow. earlier. So now they're like, okay, this is clearly the same person. Couples are his MO, lover's lane. 
that mm-hmm. whole thing. Very yep. uh, cliche and terrifying. Yep. So Betty Joe's saxophone was also missing, and they assumed that uh, the killer had stolen it to sell it and make some money. And evidence suggested that Paul and Betty Joe had both fought valiantly to defend themselves and probably each other as well. And oh, God. at least for me, that that strikes me again as that like multiple bullets in different parts of no, the body. It totally makes sense. Right. Especially like so- one's like behind him yeah. in the ribs. It's like he's almost like getting like turned around or trying to like like trying to defend someone else. I don't know. Yeah, it makes you yeah, it makes you wonder. It's uh it's just a a gruesome, horrible thought. Um, and again, like friends said, they were very well liked. They didn't have enemies. They weren't like in any sort of bad crowd. Like there was no reason that these people should have been targeted. Mm. So if the public was on edge after the first attack and then the double homicide, um, right. now the town was freaking panicked. Panicked. Just wigging out. I remember and, this was a town that people said they were, it was like callous. To, yeah. So, I mean, they're clearly able to fear. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. They're, yeah. In <laughs> the case capacity you needed, is still there. In case they needed to re up, they a have a reminder. Done so. Yeah. A reminder of true terror. And so now they're like, oh shit. And, you know, it makes sense because if you think like, oh, there were a lot of criminals that would go in and out of town, like you'd think that would stick to like very specific. T- places and yeah, groups of like, people and yeah. types of crimes like probably mm-hmm. not like just executing teenagers at lovers lane like that's it's very yeah, different like that's what talk about a very particular mo yeah yeah and like a very shocking one too um and so now they're freaking out uh gun stores repeatedly sold out throughout the entire city the local theater canceled late night showings until further notice the Texas State Police, the FBI, and the Texas Rangers got involved, and they offered a reward for over six thousand dollars, which today is about one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. Wow! Uh, wow! So that's quite a chunk of change. I mean, I feel like, and like having kids in like lockdown and stuff, or like oh like yeah, you wouldn't want your whatever. kids going out. Yeah, yeah. Especially if you're a teenager, and like all that's been happening is like teenagers are dying. Oh yeah! Can you imagine being a parent, and it's like your kid just wants to go play saxophone at the VFW, and you're like, right. hell no you know yeah. just so scary and uh so this reward was offered and of course the one caveat of like asking for the public's help is that a lot of false leads started coming in uh-huh. uh and this can really serve to distract investigators and it's hard because you know we always say like see something say something which is still true but you know of course people aren't always going to be 100% accurate with their leads. And so things got distracting. Um, And it was amidst this frenzy that the editor for the Texarkana Gazette, Calvin Sutton, officially coined the name The Phantom for Uh, this cryptic killer. Getting away and into the air. Yeah. Yeah, he's like in the night and he wears like a white bag over his head and he disappears. Yeah. Just spooky. And so as more investigators responded to the case, one guy, he was a Texas Ranger, and his name was, get this, Lone Wolf Gonzalez. <laughs> yeah, that tracks. That yeah, makes yeah, a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah. sense. That, that sounds right. Feels very Texarkana also. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. So he's a Texas Ranger. He shows up, and he basically proceeds to do absolutely nothing helpful. Oh, uh, good. Okay. <laughs> he was... I was hoping he was going to, like, be the savior. Be the one, doesn't it? Like, with a name like Lone Wolf Gonzalez, you're like, okay, this guy. You better deliver. Right? You better deliver, yeah. And it sounds like he thought he was going to, but basically he showed up and he just was this, like, extremely famous lawman who enjoyed media attention and wanted respect and attention from the local elites. And uh, people basically started to say that investigations for him came second after attention and haircuts, among other perks he had. Well, now in hindsight, I mean, if he's calling himself Lone, what was it, Lone Ranger? Lone Wolf Gonzalez, Texas Ranger. I feel like we should have seen that coming quickly. Yeah, yeah. If you call yourself Lone Wolf, it's sort of like... Okay. It's like you already want to come off as mysterious. Got it. Yeah. Got it, got and it. like you can't work well, doesn't work well with others. You know, I feel like. Right, it's, right, right. Is the outlaw. vibe. Yeah. Outlaw. Uh, An outlaw turned good. A vigilante almost, but like 
just getting his hair cut instead of actually doing anything productive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I like that we're, we're giving him all of this hate and maybe he was just an introvert. Like, he's like, no, I'm just a lone wolf. No introvert calls himself Lone Wolf Gonzalez and then, like, shows up in town to get, like, it, it, attention it, on the media. Sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. right. Um, but so he shows up and he is extremely famous. He just wanted... Uh, allegedly this is according to the other people who worked the case he just wanted attention from the media and wanted to kind of rub elbows with the local uh you know elites you would say and the investigation didn't seem to be a priority for him uh at least his presence did one good thing which was calm the public because you know someone again named lone wolf comes in you're like never fear yeah lone you're wolf like is here our problems are gone it's okay <laughs> uh we're safe now <laughs> uh and so they needed some calming and i guess at least it did that so one officer who was active at the time later recalled that things had become total chaos among the local residents so oh, shit Everyone was carrying a gun and convinced they were the Phantom's next target. Um, and the officer said he would approach houses with his sirens blaring because he was afraid that if he just showed up unexpectedly that he would get shot. Yeah, yeah. That These makes sense. people were so on edge. And actually, one bar owner did shoot an unannounced patron in the foot. And I say unannounced in air quotes because the patron was just entering the bar to order a drink. And like people were just so people the were just so bar, jumpy and happen yeah. to have gun access. Anyone getting the hint here? <laughs> yeah, Maybe. bar owner just like shot him, and he was like, "What the fuck? I just wanted a gin and tonic," and it was like, "Oh, oops." Oh God, yeah, people on high alert, and everyone's got a gun, and everyone thinks everyone else might be a killer. Like, yeah, it's going. almost more dangerous to be <laughs> around your neighbors or like around yeah. town than you it just is stay home at that point. <laughs> yeah. So one story goes that the chief deputy of the sheriff's department approached a car one night where a young couple was snuggled up together and he called out to introduce himself. And he told them, I mean, which I think is fair. He said, there's a killer on the loose. You know, you two shouldn't be out alone on a lover's lane situation. There's yeah, like, are you aware of what's hello? going on right now? This is the worst place to be. Exactly. And so he said, aren't you afraid there's this guy on the loose? And the girl then pulled a pistol out and said, mister, I'm glad you told me who you are because I was ready for you. <gasps> oh, my <laughs> God. Like, everyone is just so ready to pull the trigger. It's And just... I'm sort of like, again, then just please don't go making out in a car if that's where he's trying to find you. Well, like, if Just because you, so you have a gun. Yeah. So you know that you shouldn't be there. You know that if you're going, you're, you might need a weapon and then someone approaches the car and you're ready to kill. Why don't you just go make out at home? Why make you go out in the basement, you know, like, like what's going on people? where you have to go here when like there are other options? That's what I'm thinking. Um, but no, uh, some people just had to make their lover's lane uh, fantasies come true. And even though everyone was like ready for the phantom at any moment, uh, and around every corner, the Phantom himself would only strike one final time. Dun, dun, dun. It was another Friday night, so now we're at May 3rd. So this is only like a couple another weeks month. later. Yeah, this time early in the month. Okay. So like two weeks later, when police on their way to do some routine work errands noted a man standing on the side of the road smoking a cigarette beside his car in what they felt was kind of an odd spot. But they didn't stop and investigate. They just kind of moved on. Around the same time, 36-year-old Katie Starks was in bed winding down for the night in the home she shared with her husband, 37-year-old Virgil Starks. The couple lived on 500 acres of farmland, eight miles outside of Texarkana. From their bed, Katie heard glass shattering downstairs where Virgil was listening to the radio in the living room. So she assumes he had broken a glass. Right. Wh which makes sense. So she... Walks downstairs and just walks into the room to check. Instead of a broken glass, she finds Virgil dead and bleeding in his chair. Dead? He, all, all she heard was broken glass and he's dead now? What he had been shot in the back of the head. <gasps> and there Whoa. were two bullet holes in the window. So that was the uh, shattering okay. glass that she had heard. So... He's changing it up because he's aware everyone is like on the lookout for Lover's Lane. Right. So this time it's a people. different MO. 
he's yeah. shooting them through the window basically so but that's also like think about a town that's already so scared and now you're not even safe at home at we, home we were just saying like why don't you just go home and now exactly. he's like oh everyone's home time to switch it up he's like i'm just listening to the radio in my living room and I'm not even safe there so damn maybe lover's lane was the safest place maybe to it be. was maybe we were wrong so Katie tried to call the police on the rotary phone, but the phantom, and again, this is like we've talked about, like waiting for the nine. Uh -huh. <laughs> and yeah. before she could freaking call, the phantom shot through the window and got Katie twice in the head. <gasps> and one bullet Whoa. shattered her jaw. Oh, my God. Katie oh my fell God. to the floor, but she was still alive. Oh, my God. And so she considered her options. The phantom himself couldn't get to couldn't get in the front door because it was locked, probably because they were scared of the phantom coming in. Mm -hmm. And so he went around the house to find another entrance. And she sees this. But why? Like he already, as far as he knows, killed them. Probably robbery. I'm not okay. sure. I'm not sure. And so Katie at the or I mean, assault or sexual assault. Who knows? But so at this point, Katie sees that he can't get in the front door and he starts looking around the back of the house. So she takes a chance. She is literally become blinded in one eye because of the pain and the blood that has oh. covered her eye. Uh, she's barefoot. She's in a nightgown and she fucking runs across the highway. She runs out the oh. door across the highway and over the railroad tracks to her neighbor's house. And unfortunately, no one was home. Oh my god, are I you know. serious? This is where my heart rate is just like through the freaking roof. This is like the most like like straight out of a, a, a true horror, horror movie, movie, right? Of like like of course no one's home right when, right when you could not need them more. That last second, yeah, of hope. But so she nearly passes out and she manages to get the strength to go to one more house and she gets to the and again remember she lives on 500 acres so she's like running it's not like right next adrenaline door. i is a crazy thing an incredible thing and so she forges onto the next house and she shouts virgil's dead and then collapses in the yard of this neighbor and thank oh, god shit. this guy was home and this guy hurt her so this guy was av prater and he grabbed a gun he fired it into the air to alert another neighbor because again they're so far away i like and how that's like the the community's the call cue. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you hear a shot it's like a bat signal like I a tell you, signal. i hear a shot i am from the city i go inside and close the blinds i do not go outside to meet my neighbors but it's, i guess in a rural area that makes a little more sense it's what i imagine like spongebob with like a conch shell it's like it's like <laughs> <laughs> like shooting into the air out. being like everyone assemble Ta -da! yeah assemble they did so he alerts his neighbor the neighbor rushes to the scene and so now we've got prater the neighbor and prater's wife and baby and they all take katie they scoop katie up in the car and drive her to the hospital despite her tremendous blood loss she freaking stays conscious the entire time shut up it's amazing yes and so She's obviously a little out of it. <laughs> Just a little out of it. <laughs> Just feeling a little right. off today. Home, homegirl's only going through it incredibly. Yeah. Just a little bit. My coffee hasn't quite kicked in. Um, she reaches into her mouth. Oh, my God. <laughs> I forgot about this part. She reaches into her mouth, removes one of her broken teeth, which had a gold filling on it, and tried to offer it to the neighbors as compensation for their health. <laughs> Honestly, like, that's very sweet. Uh, but that's the, I feel like that's the ultimate, uh, like, is, like, being too nice. If it'd be girl. like, it'd be like, girl, you, uh, your, girl. your eyes covered in blood. It's okay. Like, we, girl. this is just a civil duty. You, <laughs> need these help you. you need these broken teeth more than I do. Thank yeah. you. Civic duty. Honestly, that moment of, like, here here's some gold out of my like, bloody mouth it's like, like this is all i have for you <laughs> oh god oh, that poor girl she poor must thing. I, imagine for her to do that like imagine the guilt she had been feeling on the way there being like oh i, I, sh I, I should get them something or just the not even necessarily guilt but like just like the the gratitude of like yeah yeah wow, that's thank true. god someone was there um, that's true wow yeah so i i imagine that they <laughs> they didn't need her to repay them for their kindnesses right 
Um, and as someone who has received teeth as a gift, I think both of us can say, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe keep those to yourself, <laughs> especially if they're your teeth that are still in your body. Maybe keep especially them. if you're like suffering incredibly also that. and you just lost your husband and you're scared and you're being chased by a madman. You're allowed to have your teeth. We're There's okay. a bullet in your head. Like maybe you keep the teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so once police and the media caught wind of the attack again, Texarkana is like. Holy shit, the phantom. He's back. He has struck again. But this time, as you so astutely noticed, there were some indiscrepancies. Or is it discrepancies? Well, I like when you tell me that I am smart. So keep doing that. (laughs) I guess I meant discrepancy. Yeah. As the smart person here, I don't actually know the answer. Oh, okay. Well, then, um, as the dumb person, I guess I'll say... Uh, it's discrepancies. So there were some discrepancies and you noticed some of it. The first thing being that this was in a house, not a lover's lane. Secondly, though, police found nothing was stolen from the house, unlike previous attacks, which included robbery. Mm -hmm. And the weapon used was different. This is, to me, the biggest red flag. The person used a rifle instead of a pistol. Oh, and was this a copycatter or a completely different killer at the same time or something? So police thought maybe the attack was personal and unrelated to the Phantom. And maybe someone wanted Virgil dead. Huh. And maybe they used this time to kind of mask their own killing. Mm. Because they knew there was a killer on the loose. And they were like, oh, yeah. maybe they'll just attribute it to the Phantom. Yeah. I- I'm not sure. And. Uh, unfortunately, we never really find out the answer to this. Um, my thoughts, though, are maybe he was going to rob the house, but then he saw that she escaped and, like, left the scene. I would agree with that. You know, like, I feel like he was trying to find a way in, which to me is, like, maybe he wanted to rob the place. Um, maybe he brought a rifle because he knew that they were onto him with the other weapon. <sighs> maybe he brought a rifle because he was shooting through a window instead of directly at someone's head i'm not sure i'm I'm with you i think that he just was going to rob and rob the house and then he was like oh shit she's she's on the right i think that makes the most sense um and i feel like it doesn't shock me that he would have a different gun (laughs) like to use since everyone else had a different gun i don't know i feel like if Um, everyone's got one gun the killer probably has two guns he has at least two guns i think is my theory my great groundbreaking theory yeah 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 um so We're not really sure, but Life magazine sent a reporter and photographer to run a story on the killings and the cases became national news. Panic rippled through the city. People who didn't have guns yet bought guns and they were hyped up, ready to shoot. People started nailing their windows shut because now they're like, we're not safe at home either. And people even set up booby traps outside their houses. So this place is like dangerous for everybody (laughs) like don't go to the neighbor's house to ask for sugar because you (laughs) might die like because there's a trap door on the porch there's a trap door and you're gonna end up in a pit of spikes they're like ready for this killer but after this 10-week killing spree the phantom would never strike again oh shit i wonder if he was like i'm flying too close to the sun like i shouldn't try it again it's hard to say so this is an unsolved mystery It's an unsolved mystery. Oh, Christine. I know. I do have some theories for you, though. Okay. So investigators now had to try to find the murderer. There were no more crimes, so they basically had no evidence to go on. Uh, There were several suspects, but the primary suspect was this guy named UL Lee Swinney, and he was initially picked up as a suspected car thief, and his new wife, Peggy, was described... This is uh, just... I'm just going to quote it. Was described as slow... And yeah, had served time in jail before and slow, basically looking back, historically speaking, could have meant she had either a developmental disability um, or it could mean she just didn't cooperate with the police. So they tried to pathologize her. We don't really know. It wasn't clarified. Neither one is good, um, but that was the word that they used. She did give investigators several statements that allegedly implicated her husband in the murder. And then she refused to sign any of the statements. So we don't know why that is. um, But she made the statements, then refused to sign them. So 
weird. There could be I a wonder number. if she like got threatened or something. That's what I was wondering. Like, I'm wondering if like she regretted saying it. I wonder if she was coerced. I wonder if she took it back. Like, who knows? But um, she didn't sign the statements. And the statements themselves were apparently also conflicting. So mm-hmm. she did seem to know the exact model uh, of car in the crime. And she knew several details. And she knew about the style of saxophone that the little girl had. Oh. So that's kind of hmm. weird and specific. I can see now why he's like becoming more and more of the suspect. Yeah. It's sort of like, well, that you should know that, you know. Um, Peggy eventually did a polygraph test to iron out the conflicting statements until there was one solid story. But at the time, a wife could not testify against her husband in court, so they couldn't use her statement in court anyway. Oh, well, ain't that just the pits? Ain't oh, my God. just how it goes. Hmm. So next investigators tried to use truth serum to well, question... What in the world? Oh, my gosh. You don't know about truth serum? I know about truth serum, but I always thought it... I didn't know if it was true or not. It is called sodium pentothal. Pentothal. Sodium pentothal. And uh, it basically is supposed to lower your inhibitions and essentially gets you to talk. Okay. And so they use this on UL... And uh, unfortunately, they gave him too much and he passed out. <gasps> oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> so that was a fail. A big fail. That's a, yeah. Okay. You'd think they'd be like, let's try it again. But nope. I feel like they also had just found out the truth serum was real and they didn't know how much to give. <laughs> they were like, all of it? I don't know. The more truth serum, the more truth. No, yeah. not, not exactly. <laughs> right? There's like a bell curve. It's like you've uh, gone too far, you know. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, so authorities decided to transfer Swinney to the Texas side of Texarkana. So this is where we get into like the differing states because Texas had something called the Habitual Criminal Act where repeat offenders of nonviolent crimes like car theft could be put in prison for life. Mm. And since he had been charged with car theft, there was enough evidence to uh, charge him for those instead of the murder. So they settled for the car theft conviction and he was put in prison for that. So they were like, at least we got him in prison. Then in 1972, he appealed through habeas corpus because he said he had not had any legal counsel to represent him when he was originally convicted and sentenced. But it was also said that he had chosen to represent himself. So that was his own his own choice. Um, Mm -hmm. Then he was like, well, for this other conviction in 1941, I also didn't have legal counsel. And everyone else who was involved in that case was dead at this point. So uh the courts were at a loss they were like shit we don't know what to do he's like bringing up this habeas corpus thing so ultimately they just said in 1973 they said we're just gonna release him oh Hmm. okay so that's what they did okay after his release he went to his assigned defense attorney's home and again he's been in prison now for uh 30 some years Jeez. Wow. Okay. He goes to his defense attorney's house upon his release, knocks on the door, kills him, thanks him for representing him and getting him released. <laughs> oh, okay. I know. It's such was... a shocking moment of like, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> I was like, no. at any moment, something could happen. No, I thought the same, but no. He thanks him. The attorney says, I've only done my job. They chit chatted 20 minutes, and the attorney remembers, uh, <laughs> That the guy was a gentleman. He even offered to pay the attorney once he made enough money. And the attorney said, don't worry about it. You know, not necessary. Wow, definitely a sharp left turn from what I was expecting. I I know. And this is just all leading to a fun fact for you. Ooh, okay. Well, there's two here. So first of all, the attorney said in an interview, he started laughing and he said that he recalled walking back inside where his wife asked, who was that? And he said, oh, that was the phantom killer. (laughs) Like, oh, my God. oh, that was just the Texarkana phantom. Don't worry about it. BFD. BFD. C- BFD. Coming to say thanks, you know? Yeah. Oh, God. Um, and so now this is my favorite fun fact, which is that now it's the 70s, but he had shown up dressed uh, as if it were still the 1940s because he had been in prison this whole time. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of weird. Like, he was fully dressed like he was from the 1940s. I mean, he probably looked like a ghost, you know? Yeah. Well, hey, if you said it was a Halloween party or a costume party or something. What? What'd you say? <laughs> I definitely didn't say it was a costume party. Hang on. Hold on. Say, say the thing again. <laughs> it's a 70s butt. 
where did my brain go i don't know but he had been in prison not a costume party for 30 years um and so he showed up like he all his clothes were still from the 40s so when he was out and about like he was dressed like he was from the 1940s oh right 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 sorry you said he looked like a ghost and i was like i don't know what my where my brain went with that (laughs) I was on I was on board until he said maybe he looked like a ghost and I was like I guess I don't know why my brain thought that I just meant like he showed up from it yeah, looks I like know, he's I'm from decades now. ago you know it's like as if someone showed up here from it's 1992 like a black kid. yeah 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 I'd be yeah, like exactly. you gotta go to like J C Penny or something you gotta like, go together <laughs> uh, you gotta come to my costume party we're throwing in tonight you don't even need to change just wear that it's in jail <laughs> it's in prison. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I don't. I really don't know why my brain just like slipped for a moment. Wow, it was amazing. You were like, "Oh, you said it was a costume party." I was like, "Did I? Why did I say that?" (laughs) I think you said, "Well, it's now the '70s," but he was dressed like a ghost. I I don't know how my brain (laughs) took it. I don't know. It's like, what is going on? I I really don't know what happened there. I want to like call a doctor. (laughs) Maybe you should. I'm a little worried. That Um, was fucking weird. Okay, sorry. (laughs) I promise I was on board with everything else, but that no, you. That was the wildest part. Is that all of a sudden I was like questioning myself. I was like, I must have said it. I don't know. This is once again where you can use that tweet about how I'm gaslighting you. (laughs) Yeah, honestly, do you guys get it now? Okay, everybody. (laughs) Oh my god. Okay, so I want to tell you about the final uh, possible suspect. Okay. And this, so that was the first suspect, right? And we don't really know much more about him. Uh, the final most prominent suspect was this guy, H.B. Tennyson. He was a teenager who unfortunately died by suicide in 1948. And when he died, they discovered a lockbox with a note buried within that could, conf- I'm, now I'm just thinking of that fucking Terrier guy eating, eating a box with a note in it. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, they found that he had eaten a box with a note in it. No. (laughs) They they found a note in a box that confessed to the murders. Wow. Okay. So, but, I mean, that feels like a ding, ding, ding. But also maybe it was this guy that just, like, was pulling a weird, gross prank or something. I don't know. So you're on something because authorities found that the note explicitly confessed to the murders of Virgil Starks and the attempted murder of Katie, along with the uh, murders of Booker and Martin. He also implied there were other murders he committed, uh, but there were several other notes. This is where it gets kind of convoluted because there were several other notes, some of them which were allegedly denials and said things like disregard the other notes. (laughs) <laughs> where i so what okay. yeah so there's some notes that say you know uh i killed them and then there's notes that say no i didn't kill them um and so this kind of muddy is the investigation and uh-huh. people debate whether the confession is reliable um and plus there's no link that puts tennyson near the crimes and no evidence that he even had access to a car to be able to go to these lovers lanes um one researcher says the case against him is based on maybes so it's like Hmm. basically all like very flimsy circumstantial evidence um and it's thought perhaps the confession was written in a state of mental crisis um remember this was before he died by suicide so you know it's hard to say what state of mind he was in um a friend of the late teen even provided an alibi for the night of the attack on the starks um and was like no he was with me we were you know doing something so that would if that were true uh it would mean that this was kind of just a an invention on okay. this teenager's part. So in the end, there were several other suspects considered and dismissed. There was a taxi driver, a hitchhiker, a Texarkana resident who was having an affair near one of the crime scenes, and a German prisoner of war who escaped and vanished into thin air, which is like its own true crime story that uh, right. <laughs> it deserves feels like, its own episode. <laughs> it feels like it's going to get its own spinoff episode yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But with no access to DNA technology... Virtually no evidence, no solid story. They really couldn't name one person as the phantom uh, perpetrator of the Texarkana Moonlight murders. So basically wow. just as suddenly as he appeared to terrorize the the Twin City, as they call it, he disappeared. And uh, in 2020, the FBI released hundreds of pages of documents regarding the case. And if you want to do your own, you know, armchair investigating, you can go dig through those. They're available online. 
Um, I do have one fun fact for you here, which is that the 1976 horror movie, The Town That Dreaded Sundown, was loosely based on the 1946 Texarkana Moonlight Murders. Um, and if you look up The Town That Dreaded Sundown, you can see a poster that I actually recognized. Um, and let me send it to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, what a creepy picture. Right? It's a picture of a guy um, with a pillowcase tied over his head and, like, two little creepy little oh. holes for eyes. And it looks very much like The Strangers. I I, I feel like I had a, a real creep factor to this whole show early on because you described the outfit that was similar well, that to The Strangers. Well, that makes sense because when I saw this picture, I was like, oh, no wonder I was picturing this exact guy this whole oh. time. Um, and so the fact that it's oh yeah i just looked up the strangers that really is like the same it's like a burlet bag but it's the same concept it's the same color too it's like that white yeah Mm. yeah so uh that's the story and unfortunately we never figured out who it was yeah oh god wow so like someone just you know went to bed every night being like wow i can't believe i got away with this isn't that horrible that's awful. And probably his past now. I mean, you know, it took place in the 40s. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Which is just Whoa. rough. Means My we God. probably will never know. But that's that. Jeez. It sounds like that where I wish time travel was a thing. You could just catch someone in the act. It really makes you wonder if, like, we'll ever get to the bottom of things. Like, because if you think about it, I know I've said this before, but, like, we used to not have um, a way to test DNA evidence and, I know, yeah. There might be now, something one day. Maybe there's something that, like, we we have no freaking clue. Yeah. Uh, like, maybe people will be able to track someone's scent permanently right? in a location. I don't know. Something like that. Something super cool for sure. So that you can is like that. S- You can, like, scan an area and, like, see, like, old footage. Rewind the history like of ho- it. A hologram. Okay. Yeah. That might even be cooler than, ta- not cooler than time travel in general, but but, like, better for... So that you don't just environment. (laughs) Yeah. And better so that you don't just go fuck around and like ruin the rest of the future. But you can watch it without interfering. Uh Aha. Yeah. I do think it's probably more ethical. Yeah. 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 Unless government. Are you listening? Government. Uh, We have an idea. That's what we need. That's what we need. Hello. Michelle Obama. (laughs) She's the only one I want to work with. Girl, I know you're in the holograph wing right now. I need (laughs) you to like write this down. Oh, Oh, boy. Anyway. I'm glad we ended this on Michelle Obama. That was a great way to do this. We should always end it on Michelle Obama. Every time. Begin, (laughs) during, after. What have we been thinking this whole time? I don't know why we just don't keep it at the Obamas. That's, uh, I mean, it'll let everyone know where we stand. Mm -hmm. I think we're, I like it. Me too. Okay. Well, Michelle, I hope you're doing well. We love you. Love you, Shelly. And? That's why we drink. (laughs)